Hello everybody and welcome! Yes, this is a Cybertruck and this is a Kerbal Cybertruck. Well, those of you who haven't lived under a rock in the technology business or whatever you want to call it have realized that Tesla have released something called the Cybertruck. And it has so many angles that I thought, well, I could easily rebuild this in Kerbal Space Program. And yes, here it is. This is my version of the Cybertruck. It also uh, offers six seats and all-wheel drive. And yes, there is even a working door for the front and passenger side cabin. And if Valentina can get herself down to the back of the thing, we can also drop the tailgate. But yeah, this is all good and fine. But this, there was also something else that Tesla presented in their reveal of the Cybertruck. And yeah, that was this um, Knight Rider style looking ATV that drove onto the thing. And yeah, it does not look anything like that, what I built, but it, <laughs> it has the right measurements to kind of fit into the bed of the Cyber Truck or Kyber Truck if we do the Kerbal thing and start everything with a K. So, K, let's. Uh, Try to drive this thing onto the ramp that Valentina kindly has provided for us. And here we go! Yeah, all wheel drive on that ATV, of course, as well. And we're on board! Yay! Okay, we don't need that ramp anymore. Let's get that back into the Cybertruck and close the tailgate so it won't drop out so easily. Yeah, it could drop out anyways, depending on my driving. Or no, Valentina's driving. She's driving, of course. I'm not qualified to drive a Cybertruck. I also don't have the money to buy a Cybertruck because the only version that would make sense costs $70,000. And if you add the taxes over here to that, it's <laughs> ludicrous money. So no, no way. And also it's way too big. And I think my wife would kill me. I would uh, turn up in such a car. Anyways, yeah, I tried to find out whether or not it can drive underwater. It can, at least in Kerbal Space Program. No word yet on how well the uh, airtight seal or anything is available on the real Cybertruck, but it has adaptive suspension and so apparently does this. At least it can take a jump from that height. Let's see how it handles tight corners, not so much, but it is sturdy, I have to give it that. We, well, it's not stainless steel, it's just Kerbal thingies, but anyway. So what else can we do with that? Well, Elon Musk is not only the head of Tesla, he also is the head of SpaceX, and, Sp and they already said that they are using the same type of steel for the Cybertruck exoskeleton as they, uh, they are using for the hull of the new Starship spaceship rocket thingy. So I thought, why not combine those? Let's get the Cybertruck to, yes, Duna. Well, it's not Mars, actually, and this is not really a Starship, but it is my uh, full-scale variant of the thing. It is 9 meter in diameter, and in order for the Cybertruck to even get there, up to the uh, freshly added cargo bay variant that I added, I had to build this ludicrous ramp, which in itself alone is 2,000 parts. So yeah, what you see here on screen are more than 3,000 parts being rendered for your viewing pleasure. And yeah, even though my computer can use that, uh, uh, even though my computer can display that, I had to speed this up very high to enjoy. Okay, let's get the crane down there. Yes, pistons are working. And yeah, we just have to drive on. Oh. Well, <laughs> the ramp was not really well aligned, but with a bit of wiggling and slamming it really hard, it kind of worked. So let's see how graceful we can get this on board. Yeah, that did not work as smooth as I intended. What do you think, Elon? Uh, room for improvement. Yeah, thanks for that. We'll talk about your glass later. 
Alright, so the Cybertruck is safely on board and now we have to get that ludicrous ramp out of the way. And once that's out of the frame, we can enjoy the approach to this magnificent rocket, which, as I mentioned before, is basically the build I showed you a few weeks, months, I can't remember, earlier where I did a full-scale recreation of the Starship with working, yes, wings to simulate that uh, crazy re-entry procedure they are trying to achieve. But what we're trying to achieve is interplanetary space. Yes, and for that, of course, we have to launch the rocket first. And here we go, we're rising up from the launch pad. Nice, and the moon is showing up for a nice little shot over there. Totally unintentional, but looks cool anyway. While we rise through the morning sun and we watch the beautiful new terrain that was added in Kerbal Space Program 1.8. Yeah, let's think about let's think about what we're trying to do here. We're just trying to fly to Duna and deposit a rover over there. Uh, but yeah, this is something I have done many times, of course, in the game, but I haven't done it in this manner. So stage separation coming up. And yeah, stuff is exploding. Hmm. Oh well, it's 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 just a booster and I'm not trying to recover that. That was a spectacular failure because that huge fairing is wreaking aerodynamic havoc on that booster. As you can see in the video I've linked in the eye icon on the top right hand viewing corner. Alright, we have a nice circulation going on and we almost have 3000 meters per second of delta V left in this beautiful little spaceship. You can see here I've added even the extendable docking port for fuel transfer, but I don't think we're going to need it. I'm going to wing it with just what I have and this should be enough. At least for a one-way trip. Not talking about returning back from Duna. This should be sufficient uh, Delta V to get there and to land there. Alright, we got a nice encounter and let's say goodbye to Kerbin while we once again deploy the solar sails. I have tucked them in during the burn so I would not damage them. Yeah, I could have placed them maybe a little bit better. Anyways, once we've reached Duna... Hi Duna! And we also got an Ike flyby which was a nice visual. We are now going to try to yeah, attempt that uh, maneuver where we are using the wings or elevons or whatever you want to call them to uh, control the starship during descent. If you have watched my starship uh, full scale video, you may have remembered that this did not work quite as well back then, but this variant actually does, because I'm using two fairings for the hull and now the aerodynamic uh, stress is now more evenly distributed. And, well, for, for some reason the game calculated it better, and if you, as you have seen, I tried to wiggle with the wings and it was really, really uh, having an effect. What's also having an effect is not having a great landing place or a great landing site because nothing was really flat enough, yeah, as you can see here, to satisfy the requirements of landing such a tall rocket. Hmm. Well, we still have enough delta V to land. Yeah. I mean... The Cybertruck still looks kind of intact. I mean, it's spinning a lot and the crew is dead, but yeah, the truck is okay. Or is it? Well, we lost part of the tailgate. Well, that's not really necessary to use it. Uh, but anyways, I think we can do better. Again! As you can probably guess from the music in the background, this is not going to stay the only failure in that regard, because this thing is really large and cumbersome, even, even with all the reaction wheels and reaction control systems. And then I thought, oh, well, that's, that this could be the site. I mean, it's a little bit of an inclination, but it's sort of okay. 
But then I realized that the cargo bay door was a little bit wrongly placed and yeah, I thought, well, we can find a better side. Do we still have enough Delta V in our tank to do so? Well, we don't have Delta V, we have fuel in the tank, but it equates to Delta V. Ah, there we go. Kaboom. Again. But still, sturdy Cybertruck, right? Again! Anyways, once I found a site that was not so bad for landing, still had to use a lot of those RCS thrusters to keep it straight, but this... I, th I thought I decided... Oh, oh, what the hell. I decided to leave it like that and let Valentina climb into the Cybertruck and get out of there. Alrighty then, let's open her up and let's once again use that crane contraption to get the rover down. Thanks to Duna's lower gravity, this is working a lot more gracefully than on Kerbin. Uh, but yeah. The docking port is a little bit too high up and that's why the vehicle is kind of stuck. So I thought I'd give it a little bit of a nudge with the crane. And I really should have set the sensitivity a lot better for those pistons. Anyways, we're free now and nothing exploded. So yeah, Cybertruck on Duna, there we go. So, Elon, if you're watching this, I think you can put a Cybertruck on Mars. It would perfectly fit there with its retro-futuristic, brutalistic design language. I mean, it looks like a thing that somebody in the 60s thought how the future in the 2020s would look like. And maybe Elon's designers are all old dudes? I don't know. But we can do some jumping into the truck bed. Well, this was a, bit, a little bit of cheating going on because I've used the thruster pack of the Kerbal. But maybe we can hit the bed with just jumping out of the cargo bay without any uh, fuel. There we go. Uh, no, that's way too wide. Hey, I could, maybe could have made it without the, without the, uh, the uh, jet pack. But yeah, whatever. Let's get you in there and let's drive and yeah, Kerbals apparently have really bad grip on their feet. I mean, that is a massive oversight in suit design, don't you think? Anyway, so we can use once again our thruster to get back to this wonderful truck on this wonderful planet with a wonderful spaceship in the back and yeah, Valentina tried some stunt driving. It worked for a little while, but yeah, then the truck ended up on its back. And usually this would be the end of the video, but not today. <laughs> because I thought, well, let's revisit a classic. I don't know if you've watched my space trucking video where I built a truck, flew it to the moon, flew it back to Kerbin and then tried to land it, just the truck itself. Well, we're going to repeat that because this is also a truck and it's supposedly made out of the same material as a spaceship. So in theory, it could re survive re-entry, right? Since it does not have any thrusters of its own, I used the Kerbal and his thruster pack to dive down there, or to reduce the orbital height. I started from a 70 km orbit, we're heating up nicely, we're already through the heating phase, look at that. And the wedge shape helps us aerodynamically, but I'm still going to think there... Oh my god! Yeah... Well, I don't think the windows shattered, because there are none. But anyways, yeah, we're here, we're all alive, and I think with the help of our door, we can try to wiggle this back into an upright position. I mean, I also have reaction wheels on board. Beat that, Elon. <laughs> there we go. The Cybertruck is a perfectly capable re-entry vehicle for up to six Kerbals to survive re-entry from lower Kerbin orbit. I mean, it's a little bit of beat up, but I mean, they could drive to the next outpost or something. I have nothing more to show you in this regard, but I hope you had some fun, same as I did. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.